Alright, and uh, welcome to a, another video tutorial. Um, this one, we are doing um, a the cooling of a thinned gun barrel. At least that's sort of the model we're going after. Um, so if, if you look at some of the early machine guns, uh, they had overheating problems. Um, it's an M1917. Let's just pull up some images. So if uh, M1917 it had a big old water-cooled barrel, um, had a little pump, pump water into the area surrounding the gun barrel in order to keep the barrel cool and so would cycle that water through uh, just to keep things from overheating. Uh, when it overheated it would warp the barrel and, and could completely ruin the gun. So it was critical to keep it cool. Um, in, in terms of keeping it operational in the field. Um, then if you look at the M1 Brownie the M1919. Um, if you look at it, look, no more water cooling. And really the rest of the gun was uh, essentially the same. Um, the difference is that um, it created kind of an outer shell to the barrel, I guess you could say, that both structurally reinforced it. Um, so if it were you know, trying to pull to one side or the other it would keep it in a straight line. Um, and in addition to that, the heat from the combustion in the uh, up in the chamber here uh, would conduct through this little uh, outer shell with the boreholes in it. The boreholes allowed for the air to pass through and cool it rapidly by forced or free convection and uh, it connected to the tip as well so uh, the rest of the barrel could conduct you know the reverse direction and cool it that way so um, that one little difference significantly reduced the weight of the weapon and uh, made a usable weapon in the field that was much lighter much more portable um, and, and had much less maintenance to worry about so that's that's what we're going to be working on today uh, essentially we're going to be looking at a whoops heat transfer problem where essentially instead of having the outer shell that only connects with the barrel at, at two main points at least from what i understand of the geometry um, instead we're going to have fins coming away from the uh, the barrel and maybe this one has fins or some other connection in there. I'm, I'm not quite sure. I'm not intimately familiar with the weapon. But uh, mainly I just want to see how this compares in, in terms of uh, how well it does in, in terms of heat transfer. Um, so we'll just show you the example so you can you know run some analysis on your own if or an analysis like this. Um, so basically what I did, I put this together in... Uh, I put this together in uh, ANSYS um, geometry, the geometry builder in Workbench design modeler I guess is what they call it. Um, so I created an extrusion from a sketch uh, of the barrel of the gun basically. Um, I created a box up top here. I patterned that box around the central axis um, and then I just combined all of them. And then I created another box, uh, deleted it from, deleted this from the inside of that box, and then just deleted the leftover material from the center. And so now I'm left with just two uh, solids. Um, so uh, if if you miss the first step, um, 
you have to click and drag on Fluid Flow Fluent into the workspace and it'll automatically create a project for you. And then you right click on Edit Geometry and that's how you get started. Um, to create the sketch, you just click on the plane you want to create the sketch in. Um, usually you right click and say Look At uh, and then you click on Sketching. Um, and I added a grid to mine. There's an option um, if it makes it easier to visualize things, you can click on grid and make sure it's there for you to, to kind of see. Um, in this case, it wasn't a very helpful grid, but um, although it lets you snap to the, the center points, which is useful. So I want to make sure it was directly on the central axis. Um, Okie dokie. So, uh, what we're, we're doing is, at this point, um, so we've got it all, uh, we have the whole thing uh, created in our design modeler. Um, so we're going to close that, and we're going to mesh it. I right click, I click on edit. And should pull it up here. Might take a second. It shouldn't take this long, but there we are. Okay, there we go. Um, so. I've had a little trouble with this. We'll see how it works out here. But uh, so, particularly with the con the contact surface, it tries to create extra surfaces out of nowhere. Um, so hopefully, the way I've modeled up this time, it won't do that. So as far as our mesh goes, um, really, I think all I'm going to do. I'm not going to add a sizing function to it. Um, I don't see that as being well. Yeah, let's do. Um, I changed my mind. So we're going to box select. Actually, first we're going to right click on mesh, insert, sizing. We're going to click on sizing. Um, and we're going to select all of our surfaces. Then, and change back to single select. Hold down control. Click on that face, that face that face, both of those um, make sure the edges aren't because we don't we really don't need that fine of a mesh and notice we're setting it up to be like a 2D problem even though technically it's 3D um, when it comes to design modeler, I haven't had good luck with creating 2D uh, surfaces. Um, naming them becomes too hard. So, um, so let's apply that to our sizing function. 64 faces. One, two, three. Yeah, that looks about right. Yeah, 16-ish. Okay, so. Um, the size of our elements. Oh, these are going to be quite small elements. I'm going to go 0 0.0005, which I believe is what I made the, the thickness of this. So it shouldn't create elements smaller than our, our two-dimensional size that we desire. Um, and the whole rest of the mesh, I'll just click on mesh. And the rest of it will say... I don't know, it can go up to 0.01 maximum. .01. I'm going to then go ahead and generate that mesh up. And hey, check that out. Um, we have a nice refined mesh at the edges um, not as refined where we don't need it 
as refined, um, including these outside edges. Although we can always adapt our grid as needed uh, when it comes to uh, making sure it captures all the the, the wakes and, and things like that. So um, let's go ahead and uh, name our surfaces. Um, I'm going to click on those. Let's call that symmetry. Oh, oh shoot. Um, that's our y direction. So positive y we'll call top. Um, call this one left. Call this one bottom. We'll call that one right. And then the rest of the surfaces, I'm not going to bother naming them. Hopefully uh, this time we won't have the same sorts of issues I've had before. Oh, hopefully there's not an extra surface there. That's exactly the sort of thing I'm worried about. Um, there should not be. Uh, that might just be because the mesh is coarse there. Uh, keep my fingers crossed. We'll call this inner. So it's going to be whatever you know temperature or heat flux is is the inner part of the barrel is. Um, it'll conduct through that and then convect away in the air. Um, so, we got it all named, we got it all meshed, I'm going to click update. Uh, maybe it's going to make me update it from the, oh, no, it says it's all updated. So we'll go ahead and set up our problem in Fluent. And this is the part, this is the scary part, may or may not work. And is it done loading? I guess it's done loading. Okay, and that's what I'm talking about. We still have these random surfaces cropping up. Bottom inner. Uh, we have contact regions. Two different interiors, which is good. We want, that's what we want. So those are okay. These are okay. Those are okay. Those are supposed to be there. That's supposed to be there. That's supposed to be there. Those are not. And that's what I've been running into. Uh, let's set up real quick and see if it runs. If not, then uh, this will be a real short video and we'll go online. We'll add gravity. Um, in the negative y direction. Um, we'll add the energy equation in there and we'll add uh, k omega model just in case there's some turbulence. Um, and add the low Reynolds number correction in case there's not. Um, we're going to use the Boltzmann-esque approximation. Um, all right, so that that should be uh, I think our thermal expansion coefficient, if I recall, is just going to be one over the temperature it's operating. Um, let's 
So that should, uh, in theory, shouldn't give us too much problems. Um, so, I'm um, looking at our cell zone conditions. Uh, we're good there. Um, oh, no, we're not. So we should have two of them. Um, so I'm going to pause it and fix that at least before we try running it. Okay, we're back. Uh, reloaded it. Um, and now we have our two, uh, two different uh, volumes that we're dealing with, um, which is good. That's pretty much what we want. Um, so we got the fluid interior, we have the solid interior. Um, let's see. So Let's check our regions. Oh, yeah. Now it created a whole bunch, created a whole bunch of extra walls uh, that we don't want. Um, so it may still not run. We'll we'll find out here in a second. Um, as far as the fluid, we have the air, which is kind of what we wanted. And as far as the solid, we want to make that a little more realistic of a material. And we'll use, uh, go ahead and use steel. Um, whoa. And then we'll add it in here. We'll use, uh, switch it over to steel. Um, Yeah, ooh, these are what's giving me the trouble here, is uh, those keep on uh, cropping up and, and uh, it's basically creating an empty surface, a surface with no geometry to it, and it won't let me solve, so. Um, oh. Well, let's see. So it looks like it's already created that. Um, we'll create our, our reference values from the uh, we'll probably have our flow come in from the light, right go out from the left. Um, we will probably uh, set up all of our or keep all our solution controls the same. Um, wall fluxes, total surface heat flux. We are going to set those to. Oh wow, now we have six different walls. What in the world is going on there? And two of them aren't even showing up. Um, craziness. Uh, so we'll just put that on the inner. And that'll kind of tell us what our heat transfer is. Um, whatever heat has to flow through that is what makes it all the way to the to outside of the volume. So, click on OK. Uh, I'm just going to go with the standard initialization again using the right to uh, generate our values. 
Um, as far as the boundary conditions, um, yeah, I'm a little concerned that it won't solve it all. Um, so going to all the trouble to edit our boundary conditions might be fruitless. Um, we'll have the bottom be a pressure inlet. Just the gauge pressure. Um, whew, almost sneezed. <coughs> Ooh, excuse me. So, um... So we'll go, I don't know, 450 Kelvin for our inside surface of the barrel. Um, those should both be interfaces. Um, those are both interiors. Left is going to be a pressure outlet. Um, right is going to be a velocity inlet. We're just going to make it a tiny, tiny number for now. Um, those are symmetry boundary conditions. This will be a pressure outlet at the top as well. And these are the ones that give me trouble. If I could just delete those, that would be great. But... Uh, Let's see if it solves. All right, and that, yeah, that's that's the thing I've been running into. Um, yeah, it keeps telling me it has some surfaces in there. Essentially, what it's telling me is it has some surfaces. Doesn't know what to do with them because uh, I don't have any geometry to them and they're just there and it's uh, they don't change the solution to the problem um, I'll see if I can fix that but uh, hang on one second yay I got it to work so here's what I had to do it was a bit crazy but uh, I had to suppress the interfaces in the mesh and then create an interface in Fluent. Uh, apparently the way their mesh generator creates interfaces Fluent does not like it. So, um, and just to show you I've got it to work. Uh, well actually let's just uh, close Fluent. It'll save it for us. Um, I'll just show you what I did. So, under MASH, I went to Connections, Contacts, Contact Region, and I just suppressed it. I right click and it gives you the option to suppress or unsuppress depending on what the current state is. Currently it is suppressed. Um, and then I went to Setup. keep everything I had and not change anything so it's still hopefully it'll work correctly all right so all these for the wall 11 wall 4 wall 4 shadow wall 5 were not there all I had was wall fluid interior wall solid interior so what I did was under mesh interfaces I hit create edit uh, I clicked on one of them whoops clicked on one of them, clicked on the other. So on zone one I used fluid, zone two I used solid. Typed in interface there and created, clicked on create. And when I did that, created these walls. Um, I just ignore them, they don't do anything. Um, so, and as far as these go, um, I just leave them on interface. You have to change them to interface actually. I think they start out as walls. You have to change them to an interface if you want it to interact. 
um, or so that's my understanding. So, uh, so that worked. So we got it to work. I can click on calculate, tell it to initialize. It'll initialize. It'll run some calculations. Um, look at that beautiful. The residuals are doing their thing. Um, so I'll uh, tune you back in when I have a result. Okay, so we're in it for about 500 iterations. All the residuals have uh, converged. This is definitely converged, the uh, heat transfer. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to, let's see kind of what it looks like. Uh, graphics, animations, contours, setup. Um, we'll just use our symmetry uh, region. Um, let's look at temperature. Uh, I might have to add those. There we go. Hey, and look at that. That is a beautiful sight. Um, we have a finarayed barrel. You can see it all uh, everywhere. It's kind of heating down below. It heats up and slowly moves across. And this little pocket warms up and lets its air out. And uh, same thing with all of them. So just a beautiful uh, solution. Um, it probably wouldn't hurt for me to adapt it a few times uh, just to review that process with you. Go adapt, gradient. Um, you can adapt usually in heat transfer problems, uh, convection heat transfer problems. You want to adapt by velocity and temperature. Um, so I'd, I'd click on Temperature gradient normalize compute just you, it should be between one and zero and I usually go about halfway in between um, mark the cells for refinement and then click on adapt um, now let's go ahead and why not huh um, and then we'll adapt as well by velocity. And now they'll, they'll probably be very similar. Uh, and then we'll just go ahead and calculate a little longer. Oh, whoops. Oh boy. Um, Hmm, need to change something so it'll make sure it uses the updated mesh. I accidentally hit the wrong option. Now I'll just change it back. Not that it would matter too much based on order of magnitude wise, but uh, okay, yeah, I want to use it for future calculations for this and future calculations. Um, although in a second I'm going to show you um, how we can make this a uh, right now it's essentially a free or natural convection problem. Um, in the future, it'll be a forced or, it'll, well, it'll be a mixed uh, forced with um, well, let's look at the residuals here. In the future, it'll, it'll be a mix of, of free and forced convection as we up the velocity of the crosswind. Um, and you can see it affecting you know the, the heat transfer a little bit uh, not too much but a little um, well that I don't know if that refinement did much but let's let's take a look no nope, but it looks about the same um, so it looks like our airflow is coming from this direction because it's kind of skewing it that way 
Um, so I don't know if my left and right uh, got reversed on this, but uh, um, but it's basically doing what we'd expect. So let's spit out a number, go to reports, fluxes, setup, um, total heat transfer rate, and uh, let's just look at the inner since that's what our uh, that's basically what we're what will tell us how much is is he is being transferred. And that tells us actually very little heat is being transferred. Um, very very little heat. Um, so basically, the the whole barrel is isothermal. It's you know steel is much more conductive than air. Uh, so most of our temperature gradients are indeed in the air around it and um, it is convecting away but just at a very very slow rate so um, slow enough that that would be a concern uh, in terms of, of cooling via only free convection um, granted you also get radiation heat transfer to the surroundings um, but if you're in a in the middle of the desert, uh, with the sun beating down on your weapon, um, it's not going to be dissipating heat very quickly. Um, it's going to be absorbing a lot and, and not radiating as much to the surroundings. Uh, the net radiation to the surroundings will be low. So, this is going to be kind of a, a make or break moment here. We're going to click on right. We're going to edit our cross flow velocity and see if that. Uh, basically, you know, one millimeter per second is basically zero. Well, let's see if we bump it up to one meter per second, uh, what we can accomplish there. So, change that. Um, now I'm just going to go ahead and uh, recalculate it here. I'll uh, start back up when, when our residuals converge. All right, let's take a look at it. I ran it for another 500. It hasn't really, if anything, our residuals kind of look worse. But uh, I'll, I can't really tell on uh, that uh, whether it looks like it's I think that last column is uh, chips monitor one. Um, it's oscillating a little bit, but. Uh, You have a minor instability there, but uh, nothing I'm going to worry about too much. So we'll go to graphics animation, uh, contour setup. Let's take a look at it again. Hey, okay. So our, our airflow is coming from this side. <laughs> um, and look at that. Nice, nice flow coming off of it. You can see it kind of indents in between on, on this side disrupting the, actually probably disrupting the uh, free convection trying to leave, um, but on this edge it, it pulls the air out of the, the uh, areas between the fins. So let's, uh, let's check out, let's see how our uh, heat transfer improved, if it did. Um, let's hope it did. It did, but not by very much. It was 0.17 something before, now it's 0.20 something. <laughs> so, not a whole lot of improvement there. Um, really hardly any at all. Um, so, uh, mechanically it would give you a little bit of a benefit though. Um, in terms of uh, having just that extra um, extra area moment of inertia around your your cross section of your barrel, so that that could be enough to decrease its tendency to warp and, and things like that. Um, however, uh, so th so that might be a benefit, but uh, ultimately it r it appears to me that. Uh, um, this is not 
probably um, a fantastic design to go with. Um, so I'm going to crank it up the one more time. Um, this time, let's say we have a really gusty wind, really high speed wind, 10 meters per second. Um, I think that's like what, 20, 20 or 30 mile an hour wind, so quite, quite high wind speeds. Um, and we'll see if that improves things or not. Um, and then this is part of what CFD is great at. It just gives you a rough idea of, uh, at least initially, you can use it to get a rough idea of things. And then as you fine tune things, you can create correlations out of it uh, as you need to. So uh, I'll let you know when I've solved for that new boundary condition. Hey, and that is a beautiful sight. Look at those residuals. Look at mm, smoothly converged out, flattened out. That's exactly what we want to see. Um, and hey, I can actually see that slightly changed. We might be doing okay. I did realize something um, that I didn't before. We might actually be getting really good heat transfer because uh, our total, uh, in fact, let's go ahead and and calculate out uh, there you go point six eight zero six sounds like a small number still right uh, that's in watts but remember that's per unit length and I forgot uh, we're solving a 3d problem but we're kind of solving a 2d one um, and so it's just a really thin surface uh, half a millimeter so multiply that by a thousand <laughs> and then multiply it by two and that's how much we're getting per meter length of gun barrel so actually as it turns out this, this probably is a, a quite effective um, means of uh, whisking away the heat from a gun barrel so if you could design a gun barrel in that shape cheaply and, and aff affordably um, it would be a good design um, so I'm gonna go ahead and let's let's look at one more time at the uh, hey and look at that so you can see the side facing the the airflow it really pulls the uh, heat away on the other side it's kind of blocked from from the wind <laughs> um, it still I'm sure pulls the heat away fairly well but uh, anyway. Um, so it's working. We're, we're getting results that uh, make sense. Um, I'm a little less confident in our, our last one. If I look at the residuals again, um, they were kind of all over the place. And that, you know, sometimes one or two things are off and it, it causes instabilities uh, in the problem and, and makes it difficult to tell if your, your solution is accurate. Um, especially when we, uh, when the parameter I choose, you know, starts out at a ridiculously high number, um, and you can't really tell, you know, how much it's, whether or not we're, we're getting it to converge very well or not. Um, so, uh, so that's a, a little worrisome, but, uh, um, if, if we were really worried that it was something to do with the fluid model, um, you could easily go back, change your viscous model to laminar, um, or change settings in here to make it work, uh, you know, properly, because it is going to be a lower Reynolds number, um, and so that and that might stabilize it and let your residuals decrease to to levels that are a little more reasonable, because that's it's a little high for some of those. Um, anyway, so, uh, and yeah, that's, as it turns out, that's actually going to be quite a high number in terms of heat dissipation per unit length. Um, so, uh, so yeah, we, we should be pretty, overall pretty happy with, uh, um, the results we got here. And, and yeah, turns out it, it looks like it's probably a halfway decent 
kind of a design uh, to use. So I'll, I'll wrap up the video there and uh, a nice useful tutorial. Um, I learned a thing or two. I hope you guys did. And uh, uh, we'll call that a wrap.